Good afternoon and evening everyone, it's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Monday, July 24th, 2023. As always, what we're going to be talking about will be Invest 95L as it impacts the Windward Islands, bringing with it rain, wind, and thunderstorms. We also have another area of interest from the National Hurricane Center located to the northwest that has a 20% chance of tropical formation, followed by another area of interest coming off of Africa. So busy look at the tropics. So taking a look at the latest visible satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com, there will be be a link in the description below this video leading to his website where you can get these satellite images for free. You can archive them and do a lot with them because he is truly awesome. So here's a look at the imagery and we can see we have again two areas to watch. Again the one that we're watching closely is now approaching the central and southern windward islands. That's expected to bring quite a bit of rainfall, strong winds, thunderstorms. Yes, it's going to bring impacts just because it is a non-impressive tropical depression or a tropical storm. It still has thunderstorms with it. So again, get ready for some heavy rainfall and gusty winds tonight. But also we have two other areas to watch right here. Southeast of the Cabo Verde Islands, we have that area of interest, 2% chance of that forming. Now this is not dubbed from the National Hurricane Center, which is why it is circled in green. That is dubbed from me because I do think this is going to develop into something a little bit more sinister as it moves off towards the west eventually. We'll look at the GFS on that in just a second. But we also have another area of interest headed towards the southeast. We're going to have to watch that one because these could sneak up upon us pretty quickly. And so we have a lot to talk about in this video. So here's a look at the National Hurricane Center. This is the latest graphics from the NHC. And again, we have Dawn up here. I cannot forget about that one since it is in our map of Quest. We have a 45 mile an hour post-tropical cyclone. This is really falling apart pretty quickly. It is moving to the east-northeast at about 20 miles an hour. So this is not going to impact anyone. It's going to be absorbed within a large-scale trough. And we'll look at that on the GFS model here in just a second. But here is our second area, or our first disturbance that we're watching right here as of 2 o'clock this afternoon, in an Invest 95L, a tropical wave is located a few hundred miles east of the Windward Islands, although the system has not become any better organized since yesterday. Some slow development remains still possible during the next couple of days while it moves westward near 20 miles an hour across the tropical Atlantic and into the eastern Caribbean Sea. Regardless of development, locally heavy rains, strong gusty winds are expected across the portions of the Lesser Antilles during the next, next day or so. So again, what we're talking about here is that tropical wave going to bring impacts. Impacts are simply rain and wind that come with these waves. So just make... Be aware of that, all right? But we're not talking about anything about a hurricane or a very strong tropical storm. And then, of course, we have another disturbance. This is headed towards Georgia and the Carolinas eventually. This has a 20% chance of tropical formation in the next seven days. And again, as I stated, there is nothing that NHC is monitoring off of Africa, but I'm clearly stating that that might change within the next 24 hours as we have that tropical wave that is located here uh, coming off of Africa. All right, so now on to our GFS model, and this is why I am not signing off on the disturbance coming off of Africa. So if we play this through, here are players of the field. I always like to uh, illustrate this. Here is Dawn up here. Here is Invest 95L approaching the Windward and Lesser Antilles, as well as that disturbance coming off of Africa, right? So players on the field, and we could almost make a triangle. Look at that. Isn't that perfect, you guys? Look at triangle, the Bermuda Triangle, I guess. Really makes perfect sense. Hmm? Pretty cool, isn't it? Not so cool if you're impacted by one of these. And of course, we have our disturbance there um, that we are watching, and the NHC is watching pretty 
pretty closely. All right, so let's go forward here and take a look at with what we are going to be dealing with. By the way, this is the 500 millibar or uh, 850 millibar um, chart or uh, flow chart that we're looking at. And so we can see uh, there's our disturbance there. And again, there's our other one. But notice, look at, look what happens with, um, with our dawn up here it just gets absorbed into a frontal system so and that's why i mean you're going to get more frontal type heavy rainfall and gusty winds than a system in itself so that's going to be absorbed pretty quickly here into the large scale pattern up here in the northeastern atlantic okay going forward you barely see our disturbance. I am even surprised the NHC is um, tracking this one. You can see on the GFS there, barely a footprint uh, off the coast of Florida. More of a footprint here on the GFS in the next three days. I don't know why they haven't um, put an area to watch on their map though, but probably going to do it tonight or tomorrow. I'm hoping so because I'm seeing this thing. I'm definitely seeing it on the Vorticity map. Nice, good sprawling ridge out here. That's probably one of the reasons why they are not quite confident to issue anything on it just yet. But yeah, there's a tropical wave there. So certainly an area to be monitoring, uh, an area to monitor, I should say, in days to come. That's day four and a half. By day five, we can see this is by Saturday, this coming weekend, July 29th. We have that tropical wave right there, and I mean, you can't ignore that. You mean, I mean, it has a closed contour, even a closed surface flow, and yeah, that's, that's a formidable tropical wave. There's going to be impacts from that. We're talking rain. Some of it could be heavy at times. We're talking about strong winds that come with these waves. Please take note of that, too. And thunderstorms. There will be impacts from tropical waves like this okay you don't need a tropical depression you don't need a tropical storm to get impacts they come with tropical waves so i want you all to really understand that with what i'm saying here because my job at the end of the day is to making sure you are prepared for what's to come for what these waves might offer Another tropical wave, a pretty big tropical wave coming off of Africa by day um, six and day seven. And then by day eight, we can see uh, by Tuesday next week, we do have what appears here to be maybe a tropical depression if we just look at the GFS model. But we will look at the euro here in just a second. Another tropical wave there. Maybe another one in the making coming off of Africa. Notice here this ridge um, is not very strong by any means and it is a little further to the north so weaker trade winds out in this direction where this wave is going to be thriving now i'm sure a few uh youtubers are going to be making videos on this or have made videos and say a hurricane is looking likely or possible i want you all to understand and i'm going to provide as accurate information as i can i really wouldn't kind of go off the road on this and say it's going to be a hurricane because there's a lot of uncertainty okay if the nhc has not even warranted it yet they might do it in their five o'clock update um pacific daylight time today or in their eight o'clock update tonight they may have an area of um interest highlighted maybe like a five or ten percent chance or actually a 10 is they only go in tens um we'll see if they actually highlight that but the reason why I'm a little concerned about this wave coming off of Africa is if we look at some previous model runs here, this is the GFS, and we're going to zoom in on the Western Atlantic here. We can see some of the models want this thing pretty strong. Okay, maybe a tropical storm at the most, then some models, nothing. It's down here, then it's there, then it's there. It's all over the place, okay? You can see it's just kind of... Uh, we're looking back at over a couple of days here of model run data. So it is all over the place. And so as long as that remains like that, there's probably not a lot of impetus from the NHC to issue anything just yet. But wow, some of these models here really, really aggressive on this wave. So something that we're not going to ignore. And as long as it remains an interest uh, to me, it's probably going to remain an interest to the YouTube channel as well. All right, so now looking at the European model, since we looked at our 
GFS and we can see of course, there is our wave coming through the Caribbean right now. There is our other wave that the NHC is watching right now on uh, their side of uh, things on the models. And then another wave there coming off of Africa. Let's see what happens here by day four, or this is day four right here. You can see that wave well outlined here on the Euro model over Florida over Georgia, maybe some enhanced thunderstorm convection, maybe some flood concerns, but really that's all you're going to see. Lots of rain and maybe some breezy winds. Here's our wave here. Here's another one coming off of Africa. And then let's go forward in time here. We're going to go out to August the 1st. This is probably how far we're going to go out on the Euro. You can see a wave there and another wave. That's probably why the Euro really not doing much with these next couple of waves coming off of Africa by any means. And we can go forward in time and the next 10 days looking pretty quiet in the Atlantic versus the GFS has another way of forecasting with another tropical wave here that the Euro is indicating by the very end of the forecast period. And yeah, you can see there that ridge is uh, rather weak indeed. So now questions are probably being asked here about where are we as far as the Atlantic hurricane season, right? We're looking at the accumulative ACE points. It's basically quality beats quantity, okay? The number of named storms does not necessarily mean anything, correct? Do you follow me on that? What you want to look at is the production of the Atlantic hurricane season, and the production is the ACE points. So the higher the ACE score, the more higher productive the Atlantic hurricane season has been. So putting more weights to like, okay, let's do another analogy here, okay? So for an example, I have 8,891 subscribers on this YouTube channel right now. Just because I have 8,591 subscribers doesn't mean I'm going to get a million views, right? Because, of course, I'm a small channel, right? So what we're looking for here is quality, right? So we can see here uh, the rank system is 8th out of 73. So that means that the Atlantic hurricane season is performing quite well. It's not doing so bad, right? So when we look at this, this is definitely above average and it's on the standard or yeah, the standard one deviation, which is if we stay at that level, we could hit 160 ACE points by November and December. That's again, assuming if we stay at that level, we can go way higher than this or we can go lower. So all you need to know though is uh, we're in eighth place this is this current year, 2023, but how do we rank in other years? We know 2021 was a fairly busy season. 1995 was a fairly busy season, all right, because that gave us a total ACE score of 227. So we can see where we rank. Look at this. Yeah, that was one of the more busier seasons, actually, and we're ahead of 1995. So it is possible we could have a really busy season. Look at, we're even ahead of 2018. We're even ahead of 2021, of course, um, as far as the ACE producing um, seasons, or those were busy seasons in a way. So what I'm trying to tell you all is just because, I mean, we might not see a lot of activity now doesn't mean we should ignore this season in itself. Okay, if I'm hoping um, you all understand me on that because it is late July, okay? It's not late September when we're supposed to have a lot of activity or even late August when we should see a ramp up with the Atlantic hurricane season, okay? We are in late July and we're not supposed to have a lot of activity. So, But we're seeing three areas of interest, right? So right now, sea surface temperatures is definitely uh, above normal for this time of the year. Uh, simply putting it, right now, sea surface temperatures in the mid to upper 80s across the central Atlantic, upper 80s to low 90s in the Gulf of Mexico and the northwestern Caribbean, definitely primed and ready to go. And look at the anomalies that we're looking at from NOAA. 
man, these are warm. Very warm waters, anywhere between one to two or two to three Celsius above the long term average. There's even a little area here that is roughly about almost four Celsius above the long term average. That is pretty ironic. Okay, very, very warm. But most of the Atlantic here, the main development region, the deep tropics, roughly between about 2 to 3 Celsius above the long-term average. And very warm here off the eastern seaboard, the northeast, even Newfin um, Newfoundland and the Labrador in um, Canada. Really warm off of Nova Scotia. Um, seeing some really warm sea surface temperatures. Wow. Uh, 6 Celsius plus here on this plot that we're looking at. So now, upper ocean heat content is something. This is a new map that I wanted to introduce you all to. Um, don't show this, this is the first time on the channel. So simply to put it, anything in the yellow, okay, we're just gonna kinda outline that, is sufficient to sustain major to violent hurricanes. Okay, let's just put it into simple words, okay? Violent hurricanes in the yellow, that's the potential upper ocean heat content that we're looking at. Look at the orange and red over here. That is extremely high upper ocean heat content. I mean, wow. I mean, that is all the way up here on 170, 160, almost up to 190 on the total heat potential. And this is in kilojoules that we're looking at. The Gulf of Mexico ready to go. So all you all need to know is, yeah, a busy season is still in the making here. And we really got to watch all the models going forward. Okay. I don't like hyping things up. I'm not here to scare you all. I'm not here to cause fear mongering. It, this is real science. This The data is there for a very busy season. I mean... I wish to say, if we had the opposite here, we had a little bit warm water here, historically cool sea surface temperatures here across the Atlantic, a completely opposite pattern, I would be like, nah, we're not going to even have a busy season. If we're lucky, we get like maybe four or five, maybe six named storms at the very most. But it's not like that this year. So I want you all to just realize that, that yes, we haven't seen anything like this. Very strong El Nino plus a very warm AMO, or the Atlantic Macadial Oscillation. So now when we take a look at the European, uh, are we seeing any potential active periods ahead based on the upward motion in the atmosphere? We're going to be going through an active phase here, potentially all the way through, perhaps maybe stretching our legs out or our arms out, maybe into the first couple of days of August, perhaps then things might turn unfavorable for mid-August or even towards, say, the end of the first week of August. Um, it might not, um, a suppressive phase is expected, but then look at this. Maybe more upward motion in the eastern Pacific that eventually will migrate into the Atlantic by the middle to the end of the month, and this is when our season gets going. Another way we look at this is when we look at the velocity potential here, this is upward motion, sinking motion in red. And we're looking at one in, uh, one mo or one member out of the group. It's similar to the control run, which is why I show you this. And so we can see the timeline here. So this is July, July 26th, August 1st, 6th, you know, so on. You go down, it gets later in time. This is the latest out here. This is the earliest currently now. All right, and this is the Mercator projection map. So I'm hopefully I'm illustrating this as greatly as I can. So upward motion here is in blue, and it looks like we could be in for a very busy period here by maybe, maybe by mid-August. I'm giving it mid-August and beyond. We could have busy period ahead here with a lot of sinking motion in the Western Pacific. So suppress thunderstorm convection, typhoon activity. Right now, there's going to be a lot of activity going on there for a while because there's a lot of upward motion expected. But anyways, if you did enjoy today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Monday, July 24th, 2023, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button if you are new to the channel, and also leave an awesome comment in the section below this video. It really means a lot, folks. I really want to thank you all for sharing this 
and also watching most of the video because a lot of this information is very helpful in the long term. But that's going to do with today's tropical weather outlook and discussion. As always, I'm David Schlothauer, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another update on the tropics.